The purpose of this video is to help you get the software installed that you might need to follow along with this video series if you own a Mac. So we're going to install two software packages today. Uh, the first one is the Anaconda Python distribution. Um, this website right here has the instructions on how to do the installation, which is basically what we're going to be following uh, in this video. And we're also going to be installing Visual Studio Code, which is a development environment that I happen to like, which is very lightweight. Uh, the second step is optional. You aren't required to uh, use the same development environment as I am, but I'll hopefully so show you some tips and tricks for using uh, Visual Studio Code if you happen to be using it. Um, as we go. So it is a good environment, but if you feel more comfortable with something else, uh, that's quite all right. As far as getting Python installed, my recommendation is to use a Python distribution such as Anaconda. Uh, it does include uh, development environments on its own, um, but those ones I happen not to typically use. You may like them, uh, so if you install Anaconda, you, you will get uh, two of those environments installed by default, and you can check them out and see if you like them. Uh, I personally don't like them, but I do like that Anaconda comes with a very nice set of uh, packages installed for Python, uh, which is very useful. It saves you a lot of trouble uh, installing those by hand. I will show you uh, later in this video how to install them by hand, however, uh, just in case you encounter one that's not included. Uh, so anyway, uh, basically what you do is uh, you just can search for uh, download Anaconda Mac. That will take you to the Anaconda distribution page here. And you just want to click on, oops, this is Windows, the Mac one. And so this one here, the 64-bit uh, graphical installer, assuming that your computer is a 64-bit. If you have a newer Mac uh, that has the M1 chip, uh, make sure that you choose the correct uh, architecture here because this is a completely different hardware device and as a result this version right here is optimized for the M1 chip and while if you download this one it probably will still work on your newer Mac this one will get better performance. If you're not aware what this is you, you may have a computer from last year or before that uh, like I do uh, and you'll be just using a regular uh, Macintosh that has an Intel processor inside and so you'll choose this option right here. I've already pre-downloaded it because it is a pretty sizable file. I don't want don't to wait for too long. Uh, so I'm just going to click on this graphical installer here and it popped up on a different screen so let me drag it over here. Um, so it's just saying okay it's going to run a program to determine if it's able to install. It's going to check to make sure you have permissions and enough space and so on and it's going to go through uh, an automated process. It does ask you to uh, to check to see some of the other alternatives. Um, I'm going to show you how uh, to do this when you're installing, but you can uh, install in different locations. You can uh, change some of the configuration options. It's not, unfortunately, an installation that just goes without uh, any input from you. All right, so this is the user agreement that I mentioned. Uh, next thing we're going to do is, so I'd have to agree to that. And that's going to ask you if you want to install uh, just for me um, uh, or on the specific disk. Since it only gives me the option of installing it on a specific disk, I'm going to install it on my main hard disk. A pretty old computer, and I don't have a ton of room on there, but uh, it takes up uh, you know 600 megabytes. Okay. It's going to pick install, it's going to do the installation, I'll put in my password, and a few minutes later we should be all set. Hopefully I remember to skip over some of this so you don't have to uh, listen to the dead air.
Well, even though it said about a minute, it actually took about 20 minutes. Uh, so it's finally done uh, now. So I'm go ahead and uh, finish the installation. And it asks if we want to automatically move the installer to the trash. We're done with it, so we may as well do that. Uh, the other thing we need to download is Visual Studio, so you can get it from here. Co so this is Visual Studio Code, which is not to be confused with Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a development environment as well, but it's very big. It has a lot of bells and whistles, and Visual Studio Code is a lot simpler. The advantage of Visual Studio Code, in my opinion, is because of the streamlined nature of the package, it opens up very quickly. Uh, it is really flexible, too. It can work with any programming language. There's a huge community of uh, third-party developers that are making plugins for it. Uh, it's actually quite great. So to download Visual Studio Code, we just need to click this button here. It's on code.visualstudio.com slash download. Uh, just note the version of macOS that you need to have. So I've pre-downloaded it because, again, it is a pretty sizable file. Uh, and you can see that it's just a zip file. So what you need to do in order to install this is you can click on it. That will unzip the file. Uh, this will unzip it in your downloads folder, so you may wish to put this in a more sensible location. So now we've got this Visual Studio Code application. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can drag this application into your Applications folder over here. So now, Visual Studio Code shows up there. Okay. So we'll get into that later. I want to first make sure that this software uh, is working uh, on Anaconda side. Then we'll see if we can get it interfaced with Visual Studio Code. All right. So uh, in order to get it installed uh, and tested, I've opened up a tab here for a popular game development library for Python called Pygame. And we're going to make sure that it works by installing the Pygame library. Pygame, Pygame is not one of the ones that comes installed by default with Anaconda. Uh, Anaconda mostly has libraries for scientific computing. Uh, this one is a little bit more entertainment related, so it's not included. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a terminal. I already have one open, but let's open up a new one. So we just go down to the spotlight. You can click on terminal. If you don't see it here, then you might just need to go to your launch pad, or you can hold command space and actually type in something like terminal. Okay, so terminal is the command environment. Now we won't necessarily have to use the command line environment in, uh, in this video series. Uh, we're just testing it out to make sure everything works okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in Python and see what happens. And this opens me up into Python 3.9.12. That's actually the version that gets installed by default in Anaconda. And in fact, you can see that it was uh, part of the Anaconda distribution right here. So that's really good. That's a good sign means that it seems to be working. Um, I'm just going to uh, quit uh, that environment right there. Uh, by the way, uh, this is actually Python. This is called interactive mode. Uh, where you can type in individual Python statements one at a time. It'll execute them immediately. That's the name. Uh, we won't really be using Python in this way. We'll usually be writing a program, saving it in a file, and executing the entire file. Uh, but uh, to give you an idea, if you want to enter in an expression, say a mathematical expression like 2 plus 3, hit enter, it immediately gives you the result. Uh, and you can do all kinds of other things like print hello, something like that. But we're going to do this inside the development environment of Studio Code, so uh, we'll just hold off on that. So there's a quit function in Python that will exit out of the uh, interactive environment. So now let's try to install uh, Pygame. Uh, so that's down here. <laughs> copy and paste there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, pip install uh, dash capital U Pygame dash dash user. And you can type the same command on your machine. Uh, now, I've already installed this to save time because it is a little bit of a longer download. But you can pause the video if yours is taking a little longer uh, before we go. So you can see it says requirement already satisfied. So pip uh, is an installer package uh, manager. So that allows us to install packages or libraries for Python. 
Uh, these are basically libraries that are not necessarily written by the people who made Python, uh, but people who wrote a library that's very useful and could be used by different developers. Uh, and this whole uh, idea of a community and, and finding these extra packages is one of the things that makes Python so popular because there are many, uh, many of these packages available and some are uh, in widespread use. So let's actually type in the command above. We don't need to type in Python 3 because the only version of Python I have installed on here is Python. So there's an alias on this computer that just says Python. If that doesn't work on your machine, you can type in Python 3, that's fine. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, run a game that comes with Pygame. Uh, and so this is actually running one of the existing uh, programs that came with Pygame. Uh, so it's not one of our programs, doesn't matter where we are, it's just loading something that's built in. So this might take a, a little while to start up, but it's just a simple test of some data. So we can see anyway, it looks like the library is just fine. So let's get back. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is get the um, Visual Studio code up and running. So just like when we wanted to open up the terminal, um, I'm going to hit the command and space and I'm going to search for code. I already did this beforehand. Uh, we can see that Visual Studio Code shows up in our Applications folder. I actually already have another Visual Studio Code installed somewhere else. That won't be the case for you, obviously. Okay, so clicking on that Visual Studio Code will open up Visual Studio Code. And it may pop into the wrong uh, desktop here, so bear with me here while it starts up for the first time. Okay, so, uh, you know, Mac always gives you warnings about the code that you've downloaded from the internet. Because we've downloaded it directly from Microsoft, I feel quite confident about it. Uh, one of the things that you can do is actually check to make sure that the, um, that the hashes uh, of these files match. It's a little bit more of an advanced concept, uh, but basically a hash is a representation of the file. If the file gets changed by somebody who's a little bit worried about the fact that the, uh, the file was, was changed by some malicious user, uh, then you can check to make sure that they have the same hash value. And if they do, chances are it has been not modified by anybody except for the original authors. It is generally a good idea, uh, but to keep this video short, I won't do that right now. Okay, it opened up in the wrong window, so bear with me. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So this is uh, Visual Studio Code. It's a really nice development environment. It has a dark background by default, which I really like. Uh, this, this icon right here allows you to look at the other files that are open. We didn't really open up a folder uh, for right now, but that's how that works. You can search and so on. This is for if you're using some kind of a source control like GitHub, um, then you can see the changes and stuff that have been made and switch between different versions of your program. Uh, this is for debugging, which I'm going to discuss in a future video, and this is for extensions, which we'll talk a little bit about today. So in order to test out Visual Studio Code, especially for working with Python, because I did mention that it works with all kinds of different programming languages, uh, let's see if we can create a really simple Hello World uh, program. So I'm going to hit Control N. Uh, or you can go up here and click this button right here, which creates a new file. Okay, when I create that file here, I can just start typing in the file. Uh, so, for example, I can type in print. And this is very big. So going to type in print hello from Python and hello from Python is inside some single quotes and we'll talk obviously more about this in the main series. I can save this now. I'm going to have to figure out a place to store this because I'm not currently in a working directory. We'll typically be working from a specific working directory. So I'm just going to go to save as. And uh, it's asking me, do I want to save it in my home directory? And yeah, that's what I'm going to do. 
Don't want any tags, thank you. Okay, I'm just gonna save it there. So now, oh shoot, I don't think I gave it the right file name. Sorry about that. Nothing needs too much attention. Uh, I was distracted by those tags. So save as, don't give it a file name like this. I'm gonna call this uh, test.py. And I'm gonna save that there. And you can see now that I named it with a .py, which is the extension that you're supposed to give Python files, that it's changed the coloring, uh, indicating that it, it, it understands some of the syntax of the Python programming language. Then down here it says, do you want to install the recommended extensions for Python? And in fact, Microsoft has developed an extension for Python. That's the one we are going to use because I found it to be very stable and useful. Click on Show Recommendations. It takes you to this uh, tab right here, which shows the extensions. And the extension that it recommends is this Python one called uh, Python. And it has IntelliSense, which is basically allows you to auto-complete. If you're typing in something, it recognizes what you're probably typing. It'll give you some suggestions. It also has a link to the debugger. So that'll allow us to debug our program, which is something we're going to talk about in the future. You see there's lots of other support included so we click on this install button or this one here. It doesn't take too long. And once this installs we can actually run our program with some of these other files that we don't need anymore. Let's all pause the recording just in case this takes a while. All right, so it looks like the extension has installed. We have a new getting started that helps us with some of the other features of this package. Uh, we're not going to use those right now, so I'm just going to close that. I'm going to close the extensions page. Going back to our test.py file, we now have this option here to run the Python file. So just click on that, and it will show us the output from the program down below here. You see that we've got different tabs here. We've got this terminal tab running this file right here, and it should say hello from Python. The first run usually takes a little while. Okay, if when you run the program, it complains that you have to select a version of Python, so I actually have an older version of Python on here, which is what we're, we're using here in Visual Studio Code. Uh, Visual Studio Code will actually examine your computer and see if you have Python already installed. Turns out I do actually have an older version of Python installed. Uh, so what you can do then is you can click down here uh, next to Python here and then choose the version. So the version that we just installed right here is this 3.9.12. Uh, so you see I've got lots of uh, Python versions installed on this computer. So I'm going to click on this 3.9.12 so they're actually using the most up-to-date version. So just have a quick peek down here just to make sure, especially if you have more than one version of Python. So let's run this program again just for the sake of it just to make sure. You can see it runs a different Python command of the same file, and we get the same output in this case because Python hasn't changed that much since version 3.8. All right, so anyway, that's enough to get you started. We're obviously going to talk about some features of Visual Studio in the future, and definitely be talking plenty of, uh, of features of the Python programming language. But this is enough to get you started, and you can go on to the next videos in the series.